and hope there are some days I wish I can grab every one of these modern day Christians and just whack them over the head. They believe in such complete nonsense and they completely deny the entire word of God. Just because they won't, I guess, to get it over with. I mean, I don't blame them on that. But things happen to God's time. It has to be in God's timing and it has to be the way God wants it to happen. They keep pulling things and making things up and it just wonders my mind out. Oh, yeah. Give me a sec. Okay. This is the Tanakh. Notice Tanakh. It is in both English and Hebrew. Oh, yeah. Starts in Daniel 9. Verse 24, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and for your holy city until the measurement of transgression is fulfilled and that of sin complete. Until the iniquity has been... Uh, I can't read. Yeah, I forget. Uh, the eternal righteousness ushered in the prophet, the prophetic vision ratified, and the holies of holy anointed. You must know and understand from the insurance of the word to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Anointed leader is seven weeks and 62 weeks to rebuild square moat. But in the time of distress, and after those 62 weeks, the anointed one will disappear and vanish. The armies of the leader who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, but his end will be through a flood. Desolations have uh, desolations are decreed until the end of war. Through one week, he will make a uh, make a firm covenant with many. For in a half a week, he will put a stop to the sacrifices and the mill offerings. In the corner, I mean, at the corner, he will be appalled an abomination until the decree of desolation will be poured out upon the appalling thing. That's Daniel. That's something that this nut, this supposed Christian, was trying to say was, I guess, fulfilled. <clears throat> I'm hoping he's looking at something else. This marks the beginning of our seven years of peace, of seven years. This marks the beginning of the rise of the Antichrist. He will control ten kingdoms, which in turn will control the world. The Antichrist will sit in the temple of God and he will declare to the whole world that he is God. Upon each of you, I grant all the power and authority due to your new positions. You are now kings and queens in your own lands, bringing prosperity and plenty to your peoples. All in my name. That's right, Matthew 5, verse 17. I just quoted it to him. It's the reason I'm surprised I didn't remember it. Beware of false prophets, which will come to you in sheep's clothing. Inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. You, um, read this, King James. Ye shall know them by their fruits. 
do men gather grapes from thorns, figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bring forth good fruit, but every corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth an evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bring not forth good fruit is hewed down, chopped, and is cast into the fire, hell. Therefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, or thy name, sorry, uh, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many work, uh, wonderful works, and I will profess to unto them, I never knew you, could uh, depart from me, ye workers of an equity. Bad read, tired too, but rest is building up. See, that's the problem with modern day Christians. They don't know their own Bible. Not remotely. They don't even understand it. They listen to the pr people whom they think they can trust and allow them to do their reading and studying for them without questioning what they hear and back it up with a word. And you find that everywhere I'm looking. It's very disheartening. Very sorry. There's more on false prophets in front of me. The whole subject is I ran into two people. Well, actually, more than that. And there's one of them I just choose not, chose not to go have a conversation with because he was such a crazy nut. The first one, he did bar me from his channel, I think. Could be on a YouTube glitch, I don't know. YouTube was glitching a lot then. And I told him flat out, we're not in a great trip yet. This hasn't happened. But according to this gentleman, we entered the Great Tribulation in 2010. And this other guy I was just conversing with, if you want to call it that, said we entered the Great Tribulation in 2011. Where is the Antichrist? Where is the one world government? All these things were written. These things must come to pass. If they don't come to pass, you're not in the Great Tribulation, now are you? Debunked. Easily debunked. You see, here's the thing. Are we in tribulations? Mm, yeah. Britain's going through a real bad time. So is the U.S. And I imagine it's no fun anywhere else. But the deal is, we're not in the great trip yet. The very first thing, the very first thing it says will have to happen. You can find it in Revelation chapter 4. very first thing. The first rider is on a pale horse. And unto him was given the sword to conquer and to conquer. I can't remember the exact wording right now. But he's going to conquer. That's the end of Christ. Of course, he's got other horses following, which is war, uh, pestilence, and plague, I believe, is the other ones. Bad memory, like I said. My memory is just getting shot these days. I mean, I've been working on that for so long, I can't think straight. got to happen first in Matthew 28 he tells you where the Antichrist will be found in a hidden chamber in the desert because he said don't go there because that's where he's going to say the Antichrist is 
he's not there. The funny thing about it is, the Muslims are looking for that person. That's their Messiah. And I know who the Messiah, who this false Messiah is. Without question, I know who he is. Figured it out. I took a lot of Sarai's work and I used the rest of it to fill, like, filled in the gaps in my mind and what I didn't know. And then, of course, I had to do a little legwork after that, but I found the answer. I know who the Antichrist is. He's not here yet. Which debunks his other guy's idea. There's no one world government going on. There is not one single world leader. There is uh, no one forcing you to worship him. There is no mark of the beast. There is um, no arrest for being of the way or Christian, if you want to go by that label, which I don't use. You're not going to find it. So that takes me back to this passage that Yeshua said. And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of inequity. The actual translation of this word properly is not inequity, it's lawlessness. Those who do not abide by the law. If you take it back into the original language, it's lawlessness. Those who do not abide by the law. I'm sure this guy is going to come back. Matter of fact, I'm positive of it. I told him to send me his proofs on Daniel. And I would debunk it before his own eyes. And I will. As soon as I can get some, well, talking wise, if I can get some morale, to be better. Got some, not a lot. Well, here's a question for anybody who wants to respond. One, why is the supposed Christian church so uneducated on the Word of God? Two, why are they so willing to follow false prophets selling them a bag of magic beans? Three, why are supposed Christians thinking they're going to be beamed up like Scotty when there's no biblical proof in the Bible that that will occur? Four. Have they ever read the book? <clears throat> I mean, read it. Don't listen to some <coughs> nut. I haven't found more false prophets <coughs> in one sitting than today. <coughs> and this is a precursor to what's to come. Because they're going to rot the church from within. If the person saying it knows that or not. We're actually doing the will of Satan. Dividing, splitting up the church. And well, bringing everything into question in the minds of those supposedly in it. I guess that's what they mean by separating the chat from the wheat. The chaff gets burnt.
I gave up drinking a long time ago. I'm not saying I won't have a beer from time to time. I think the last hard liquor drink I had was about seven years ago. I got it to help me sleep because I'm coughing like I am now. It was another year like this <coughs> when it was real bad. And you just gotta sleep from that time. I love waking up coughing like this. And something had to be done. But if this was that, then I'd be drinking up a storm. But it wouldn't do any good. They'd still be as lost as they are now. The world is lost. Hopelessly lost. And I don't have enough baseball bats to go beat people over the head. Nothing can be done for him. It requires a seeker to want to listen and to want to know the truth. And they don't. Ah, oh, you guys be blessed. Oh. Let's see. I was going to do this on Tuesday. Let's do this now. Oh, Heavenly Father, I beseech you to place a blessing on my brother John. May you keep and look after him. May you guide him with your hand. And may all the goodness of your heart fall upon him and to keep my brother safe. I don't pray out loud often. As I mentioned before, I look at it as something to be done in private, not in front of others. But since most of the modern day church deems that important, then I guess I'm blessed. This is the only way to reach them. My way is different. That is the best I can get close to your way. But yes, I want my brother John taken care of. And I also like to have my wife back. Where I see her every night. And know that she is safe. Where I know she'll be loved and cared for. But the days are coming are dark indeed. And I don't want her out in the cold. Take care, Al. Have a good night. I'll talk to you on Tuesday. Shalom.